very brilliant design actually loads of little switches and twirly knobs and what have you um, and um, you know that gave you full control of the radar functions radar display itself is uh, is under the uh, under the boot there um, it's um, as you can see it well it's a, it's a very early <laughs> cathode ray tube display <laughs> so very low intensity monochrome display um, and uh, the reason you had the boot there you, you, you folded that out so you could put your head against it um, you know to cut out the any extraneous light so I mean you, you just unfold it this one's quite old and floppy but you know it's to me there we go to give you an idea right it, it probably won't it, it's probably too uh, <laughs> oh, I see what you mean now. <laughs> yeah. DL. But this is obviously well polished, so that's uh, that's why it's uh, it's uh, like that. But um, once you've got your, your eyes against that, obviously you'd need um, the autopilot in um, to fly the aircraft because you you know you once, once your head's down there, you, you're not very aware of what's uh, of what's happening. Uh, control column, obviously. Um, firing lever on the uh, on the uh, front there. Uh, trim switch, electrical uh, trims for aileron and uh, and tailoron and elevators. Um, handbrake lever there for the um, uh, for the wheel brakes. There's no nose wheel steering on the on the aircraft, so to steer it, the nose wheel free casters. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to turn left, you go full left rudder, apply some brake. That just breaks the left wheel, uh, starts the nose wheel uh, turning. Uh, uh, castering and then it will go round there to straighten you use the opposite rudder and, uh, and brake. Um, main flight instruments obviously in front there attitude indicator on the left and uh, compass display on the uh, on the right hand side. In the compass display uh, you can you call up um, um, a TACAN display. Ta TACAN it gives you an air, um, a range of bearing to a ground station, so you select a ground station. Maybe some airfields had the TACAN on the airfield, so that would give you range and bearing to your uh, to your home base. Um, also, in there, you select the instrument landing system, um, which is uh, precision approach, uh, you know, to a runway, basically. Uh, alongside, you've got um, altimeter and um, rate of climb and descent or vertical speed just below it so that's all your main flight instrument panel and we already discussed the uh, the strip speed at the at the top top there <coughs> going along from here um, throttles uh, obviously one for each engine uh, number one is the lower engine number two is the upper engine um, the rear position is um, high pressure fuel cock off so no fuel to the engine. So to start it, you need to put it forward to the idle position. Um, operate the um, there's a gang bar which I'll show you in a minute. <coughs> that puts the fuel cock, fuel pumps, and the low pressure cock on. And then you press the start button, and away she goes. Uh, yeah, this hand control I've already mentioned. Um, up here you've got the um, the main warning panel. So for serious. Uh, warnings like engine fire, reheat fire, uh, oxygen failure, they come up there. Uh, fire buttons at the back there, one for each um, engine. Uh, handle is there, so to operate the brake chute you just pull that. Uh, there's a cable goes to the uh, to a hydraulic selector at the back end of the aircraft and opens the doors and the chute pops out. So down here, um, trim indicators at the bottom, undercarriage position uh, indicator, and the carriage selector, the uh, red lollipop there. Um, flap indications, flaps on this were either fully up or fully down. Um, brake, uh, hydraulic brake pressure indicator, so accumulator pressure and then the pressure at each wheel on the top two uh, needles. Um, airspeed indicator we already covered. That is a um, standby horizon in case the main attitude indicator fails. Uh, and uh, Above that, yeah, so we've got we've got the altimeter there, have we? I can't remember. Can't see it from here. Let's look. There it is. Yeah, that's it, yeah. So that's your standby um, altimeter there. Okay, um, across the top, you've got the, uh, the light fighter sight, which uh, effectively uh, you could use for visually pointing the 
the missiles at an aircraft to get an infrared lock, or it's used as a um, as a gun sight for the uh, for the Aiden cannon. Okay, that's there. Um, right here, you've got uh, switches for the um, flight refuel probe and the flight refuel. Um, select flight refueling when that depressurizes a tank, so you know the fuel will flow from the tanker into the uh, aircraft uh, fuel tanks. Uh, down in front of the control column, you've got the uh, the main uh, radio controller there, and uh, there is a standby radio there uh, elsewhere, which is um, uh, just um, on the emergency frequency basically. Further to the right, you've got the um, the top gauge over there is the uh, the red out the radar altimeter. Um, that was introduced fairly late on in the Lightning. It um, it wasn't in when I left the Lightning, but um, uh, for low level work, uh, really an essential an essential bit of kit. Just below, you've got the um, uh, fuel gauges. So uh, uh, fuel gauges for each uh, each wing tank and the ventral fuel gauge as well. Below those, uh, engine uh, RPM um, and jet pipe temperature just below there. Then the starboard console there, you've got the um, um, well in, in, internal cockpit lights, the rotary dimmers. Uh, you've got the armament control panel for selecting uh, either uh, guns or arming the air-to-air uh, the -air missiles. Just behind, uh, you've got um, yeah, light switches along there, external lights, and then the autopilot, uh, which is the um, that one that I'm pointing at now. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So that's the autopilot controller there. You can see the various modes. You've got um, uh, height and heading, which is very useful, as I said earlier, when you're uh, looking in the uh, in the radar scope. Um, you've got um, an automatic. Uh, instrument landing system approach so the autopilot would fly the aircraft on the, on the ILS uh, which is pretty good on a dark uh, dark dirty night okay just behind there that's it you've got the um, the secondary uh, or the IFF SSR secondary surveillance radar so you set up different digits on there and that will give um, a squawk uh, to um, a ground radar to identify the uh, identify the aircraft Okay, um, yeah, the start buttons are, um, yeah, just over there, that's it, and uh, just come back, I'm just trying to, I can't see them from this side uh, very well. I think it, they're just below this, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that, yes, that's it, yeah, it's, you can, it's a bit, so, it's yeah. a bit in, the, uh, in the dark there, yeah. And just down by your right side, there's uh, what we call the... Um, it's a rapid start uh, gang bar. So um, to start the engines, uh, you put this one lever there, you pull it up and it will switch all of those switches on. Um, so that's fuel cocks, fuel pumps, um, and uh, one or two other things as well. You normally preset one or two of those switches before while you, uh, while you uh, get in the aircraft ready to start. But the start, very quick, um, open the high pressure cock over here, gang bar up, Start isolate and press one of the starter buttons, and uh, and away she goes. So um, yeah, very very quick sort of uh, starter. Uh, right up here, you've got the auxiliary warning panel, which has got warnings of um, uh, lesser importance, like a, a signal um, hydraulic uh, failure, a fuel low pressure warning oil pressure warning etc I don't know whether you can see the captions there just about there. just about oh yes you can just yeah. a bit of light there yeah so you can see the various captions on there and um, yeah that's about it really obviously sitting on the um, ejection seat um, <laughs> which um, you can motor up and down to cater for pilots of different uh, different heights it's electrically uh, operated um, Canopy. If you did have to um, have to eject, the canopy would have to go first. The seat wouldn't go through the uh, through the canopy on this. So the ejection sequence would be: you could either use the uh, the top firing handle if it was a premeditated ejection, or for most cases you, you'd use the bottom handle down between the uh, down between the legs. There. So you pull that canopy is jettisoned, and then the seat fires shortly afterwards. <laughs>